In this next tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to generate flat two-dimensional lines, curves, and polygons. And really, I think the most common is to use what's called a polyline. A polyline is a multi-line segment line, and it will register as a curve. So if we wanted to start, and let's say this time we wanted to start at the origin, we can just put in that coordinate. Now, we could say that we want to start at 0, 0, 0, that's x, y, and z of 0. Um, but also we can say polyline and just put zero. Uh, when you enter just a zero point, that will automatically assume it's the origin. Uh, let's turn O snaps on and ortho on so that we can drag this out and say 15 feet to the right. And now we're gonna go 10 feet up. We can go five feet in, three feet down, 10 feet over, and then close the poly curve. So this is a polyline, um, it's a closed curve because these vertices all connect. This will allow us to make irregular shapes and you can see that when I click on this polyline, I can actually go in and with the gumball, I can actually edit the vertices. So let's see if I wanted this vertice here, I could drag this out to the right or move it up. I can use control Z to undo that. I can also manually enter dimensions. So if I wanted to, I could just single click on the red axis, say two feet over, single click on the green axis, two feet over. I could rotate this, but because it's just a vertice, it's not gonna change anything. I can also grab multiple vertices. So first I select the polyline, I grab both vertices. This time I'll say negative three feet, and I can adjust my polyline into a different figure. Outside of that, I can also look at the polygon tool. Polygons uh, let me define here in the command line the number of sides, if they're inscribed or circumscribed, if they're the edge, a star, a vertical, or around a curve. So let's go inscribed. Uh, we'll do a five-sided, a pentagon from the zero point. And here I can say, well, how far do I want that vertex to be? Maybe two feet. When I do that, then I get a two-foot uh, length for kind of the center of my polygon out to the vertex. Um, if I run that command again, and I can I can relaunch the last command used by hitting enter, I could change the number of sides to say seven. I can use my O snap tool down here to get the center point. So as I drag along this there, it snaps to the center, and I can drag this out. And by making it exactly match this two foot leg, you can see that it overlaps. So this is my seven-sided and my five-sided polygons. Two very common polygons you'll use are squares and rectangles. And to do that, I can just use that rectangle command. Again, here, I'm gonna say that we're starting at the zero point. First corner of rectangle, I'll just enter zero. And then other corner of rectangle. I can click that other corner or I can come in and say, well, three feet and three feet. That will give me my edge lengths of those rectangles so that this would become a square. If I wanted to then, I could grab these vertices and give it an extra little bit. That is a now rectangle with a five units by three units. One other tool I use often under rectangle is the three point rectangle. This lets me go in and put different locations of those points. So if I turn off ortho, I can drag this way, which will set the base and then drag up and give that third corner by defining the three corners of the rectangle, it'll create everything for us. Besides uh, uh, orthogonal and linear geometries, we can also create curvilinear geometries, things like circles. So a circle, you can see, I'd ask for the center of the circle, and if I'm creating a two-point, three-point tangent around core or fit points, if we say that we're just creating a standard circle, we can go to zero, and then I can say, well, I'm entering a diameter of six feet. When I do that, I get a six foot diameter circle. If I relaunch circle again and go to the center, I can actually change from the diameter to the radius. And then this time I can put in maybe a two foot radius. I can also come in and say that I wanna fit a circle between three points. And so I could click three points here and generate a circle that goes through those three points. Outside of the circle, you might have a need to make an ellipse. An ellipse is very much like a circle, except it has two centroids. So we're defining the, the radii here and then dragging out to give its thickness. 
we go again, it says the, the center of the ellipse, somewhere here, the end of the first axis, somewhere there, and then the end of the center, second axis, somewhere like that. You can also see that there's some uh, that we can define the ellipse uh, from, say, from foci. So I can mark two foci and then drag from them. It's another way of creating elliptical geometry. With that, we can look at the arc. The arc is defined by the center point, and then we can say the start of the arc and the end of the arc, and we get kind of this, you know, uh, evenly, uh, we can actually dimension, and I know, let's just take a look, dimension the radius and see uh, that that radius is even the entire lay. So this is just an arc, and you can see there's the center point where it's struck from, delete that. And we can look at curve. Curve works in a few different ways. So if I just drag out a curve here, you can see I get a, a curvilinear piece of geometry. And you can see when I click it, its control points here are actually not on the curve. That's because this curve is what's called a Bezier curve. And so it's averaging the curve position based on its proximity of the control points that come before and after it. If I move this control point, you'll see that the curve adjusts, but doesn't ever touch that control point. If I come in and say that I want to create a series of points, I can go in, make some on the screen. I can then go in with curve, and I can use those points as anchor points. So I can click these, and you see because we're using a Bezier curve, it doesn't touch except for the first and end. I can use an interpolate curve an interpolate curve will go through the control points I click. So by snapping to these control points, you can see an interpolate curve moves the curve through the control points I click and then generates outside control points from it. Lastly, let's look at how we might edit some two-dimensional geometry. If I just create a series of lines, say here and here, I may want to trim these lines so that they're no longer uh, overlapping each other. And I can do that by using the trim command. So saying trim, it says select cutting objects. Right now I'll just use this object to cut. I'll hit enter, it says select object to trim. I'll select this object. I could select both at the same time and then trim those sides so that way we can get a clean joint right there. The opposite of trim is extend. So if I have a line here, a line there, I could use the extend command. Extend says select the boundary object. That's this. I press enter and then select the curve to extend. That's this one. This curve will now continue out until it intersects that curve. Then I can come back with trim and trim this. Finally, let's look at two last commands. And again, I'm gonna use two lines. Although we could be using curves for this stuff, it really doesn't matter. Something like that. And we're gonna use the command fill it. F-I-L-L-E-T. Fillet is a way to trim and join curves based on a radius. So this time, let's say that I want to set my radius to two feet. I can click one endpoint and then the inside of the curve that I want to keep. And what it will do is extend that curve and bend it into the next while trimming off this curve. So here we made the curve I initially created, the line I initially created, and that two foot radius fillet. If I didn't want to use fillet, I could look at using chamfer. Chamfer, again, I set a diameter, two feet, second chamfer, two feet, and I can grab my curves here and here, and it creates a chamfer between those two edges. Those are just a few commands on how we would create uh, two-dimensional geometry, trim it, extend it, chamfer it, and then ultimately join it so it becomes one single object.